Stories are how we make sense of our reality, but we can often have a story that we mistake for truth. Um, you hear people talk about limited beliefs. That's when there's a distortion in their story that they mistake as completely true. And sometimes that might not be conscious. Like sometimes you have an unconscious limiting belief that keeps you stuck, keeps you living in distortion, in lies. And there is nothing more corrosive than living in distortion because if you think it's truth, you will, not, you will hold on tight to be in that comfortable, muddy, you know, sad kind of lies, chaos, right? And so I see this happening now because people have, an, um, you know, people don't have beliefs. Beliefs have them. And right now everyone is, they really believe that their beliefs are them and that their stories are complete fact. But when you're able to kind of step outside of all your framing, all your beliefs, all your stories, and see them as these little stories that are just kind of more fluid, more mutable, that you kind of look at and think, oh, look at that story I'm telling myself there. Could have a lot of truth to it, but a lot of it's completely lies, a lot of it's completely based on fear, a lot of it's based on conditioning. If you can do that, you actually empower yourself far more than if you subscribe to stories as if your life depends on it. Because look at this, people are now, right now, with the Roe versus Wade overturn, they are subscribing to the story that has been fed to them that the world is ending, that their rights are ending, that this is an attack on women, that women have no power or rights, right? And, and, they, and there's, a, there's a sense of futility, desperation, fear, panic, and it, there's tons of pain, and I completely empathize with that pain. However, when I see this playing out, it's almost more like I'm, I'm watching it as though it were a movie or a nightmare or a dream because I know that what's really in the, what's really making this reaction happen is that that story that they have been subtly, subtly that story of if Roe versus Wade is overturned, you'll lose all your rights. I've always, that's always been in the back of my mind. Like I've heard that little kernel of a fear of a like fear whisper. I've heard that throughout my life. And so it was almost like a button that's pushed and then, but what does it actually mean? 41 out of 50 states still allow abortions. It, um, it's been moved from a federal level to the states to decide. And to me, it appears that it's going to be, it's going to be more of, a, of capturing the nuances of what the people in that particular area want. And also, it seems to me that people are pretty sensible about how the first trimester, um, that is reasonable, but those late-term abortions are really getting into the territory of this is... You don't hold on to a baby for seven months and decide to abort it. And, um, and then also I think there's a lot of, 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 of whenever people bring up like if, if the mother's life is in harm or if it's a rape or incest, I think most people on both sides see those as, yes, those are situations in which abortion is a solution. And it also appears to me that there are other factors such as um, the corrupt kind of fetus and organ dark market selling that, pe that is, has been done. Um, there's, there's a lot of factors all across the board that are worth analyzing. And so, um, so there's so many stories within the stories. Like there are some people that really focus on the black market organ stuff. And that those are the kind of people that also want to talk about how the elites sell body parts, eat body parts, eat blood, drink adrenochrome. Like that, that's one, that's one story that people are preoccupied with. The, that's what I'd call the satanic ritual um, exposure group. That, those people, they, when they look at this, they're seeing that all over the place. Then there's the people, the kind of the mainstream feminists who are kind of the sex in the city, the, um, the, the kind of casual sex, they're, they're seeing this as 
that, that natural, oh, this is the end of the world, oh no, Handmaid's Tale, they're going into those stories. They're living in dystopia and they're there. And I can witness that story and observe it because uh, a lot, a part of me would have probably still been in that, but I've, I've had a lot of, of realizations of how you can have beliefs and then they have you and then you, you get, you get, you start, you get skewed, you get distorted. Um, and then there's a story that like the contrarian, like Candace Owens brought up a very interesting point about the history of Planned Parenthood was actually based on a, a woman who wanted to keep other races from um, populating and, and having a greater population. So they, they had a whole strategy of getting Planned Parenthood people to be in neighborhoods, to be in poor neighborhoods and to go into schools and to start to make people really, to make the idea of abortion and Planned Parenthood be something that women would beg for um, or want. And so, and, and that, that her plan was a eugenics. Like that is completely messed up and it completely goes against, notice the kind of binary narrative we have which is that the liberals are always for women's and, and race rights. But see, here we have the history of how this act supposedly like for women's empowerment and women's sexual liberation organization. We have this whole story about how they're, they're um, a kind of almost a justice, kind of a um, good humanitarian organization. Well, the history of it, the women of it, is actually based on complete abhorrent racism. That is what, so that's why, like, when you get caught in a story, you can't see the truth because, see, you, if you're all, if you're in your binary where it's just the left is for women and for race, race, and we, they are looking out for LGBTQ, well, the history of Planned Parenthood doesn't fit in with that neat little story when you're making it your savior. The history of Planned Parenthood is dark, but it's, uh, it, it's dark and it's not aligned with what you think it's aligned with. It's, it's trying to depopulate minority population. So again, when you can look at all of this, you're getting a way but you're getting a better scope um, scope of the truth because you're seeing all, all of these things have kernels of truth. You know, you can learn from the, the people who are talking about the black market with organs and blood. You can learn from the mainstream feminists who they have had that you know, there is, a, there is an empowerment to, to knowing that you are not just immediately, you know, in a stuck situation. Um, if, if somebody is, if somebody, you know, it, anyway, and then you can learn from the, 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 the Candace Owens contrarian perspective of saying, hey, let's warp all of these on our, let's turn this assumption on its head and notice actually Planned Parenthood doesn't have this idyllic, um, um, in, in, you know, wonderful history. They're in fact extremely, they're, the motivations behind getting abortion culture going were based on racism. So, so get it, so, so don't be feeding into how all of these narratives, like don't get stuck in any one of them. Being, being able to kind of take them all in and observe the, the, the flaws, the fallacies, and the, the truth in all of them actually helps you get more at the truth. Because we, that's how we, we make sense of our reality through stories, through lenses, through beliefs. And so right now we're all in this chaos and everyone's holding on so tight to their beliefs. They're like, I am my beliefs. They truly believe, I am my beliefs. No, you, you aren't your beliefs. Your beliefs can be you can observe a lot of different realities and truths and stories and think, wow, um, it's what, what a, what an interesting world that we have so much of this darkness, but we also have a lot of empathy. We have a lot going on here. How am I going to view this? That's going to be the best for me. That brings me the most, brings me to my best self and brings me to the brings me to truth because the truth is 
Truth is actually always going to bring you to your higher self. When you're, cold, when you're in lies, you're always going to be, in order to keep lying to yourself, to others, you're always going to have to be in a state that keeps you at odds with, with um, you're always, you're always going to be a little bit miserable, you're always going to be living in fear, but if you, you start to, the more you start to untangle all these, the freer you feel. So just kind of assess, assess. Oh, what's this framing? What's this bias? What's this story that is, is uh, if I looked at it this way, it's this. But it's not a binary either or. It's, there's, there's truth to this story. So how can we look at situations when these news events happen and we see the media tells us this is the end of the world? Is it? Like, look at how they're wanting almost you to get, like the headlines I saw, it was, it was the same as, it was the same as with so many other situations where I see how they're trying to push my buttons, just like a psychopath trying to manipulate a victim. There's a, there's a like delight in that. Anyway, so see what stories you tell yourself. See what stories that others are trying to push on you and take them all in and take them with a grain of salt, but also take them with an, an ounce of curiosity and be a willing to just like observe and, and, and take them in with a level of neutrality and assessment and analysis and curiosity. And I think that is the best way to, to navigate this.